in the name of my ancestors. <sighs> Peace forever and always, and welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. I'm the host, known here on YouTube, Vimeo, Daily Motion, and make sure that you friend me on Facebook under the name Sheshira Tenobeta. I'm known as the mighty, 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 Hef, <clears throat> and your snub number seven, your brother, and hopefully your friend, Talik Ibn Ra. I have 15 minutes to do this topic, which I could make last a very long time, but I'm not. I'm going to try to condense it down to 15 minutes. Let us talk about it. I want to make something very clear that I am not here to convert nobody to how I feel or my opinion, unlike religion. I'm not interested in converting, nor do I get angry because you disagree with me. That's your prerogative. That's your business. And you should uh, have the right and be left alone to do how you feel, uh, believe, or opinion how you feel you should in the direction that you should go. All right. I'm not going to get angry with you on that point. But I do hope to bring uh, topics and opinion to us so that we are able to think for ourselves. Not talking about what the Bible said or the Quran or what you heard President Obama say. I want to know what you think. Think for yourself. I know if you think for yourself, sooner or later, you're going to come my way. So there's no need for me to, to convert anybody. When you begin to think for yourself, you're going to come my way anyway. Sooner or later. And as time progresses, I notice that the masses of the people, little by little, because your mind, somebody's out there picking at your brain, causing you to think. The people are beginning to, beginning to think for themselves. All right, I have 10 minutes. I have two subjects that I want to deal with real quick. And the two subjects are, is God a deadbeat father? Is God a, de a deadbeat dad? And the, and the conclusion will be, is it really necessary to have a man in the house in order for a family to be successful. Let us deal with these things very, very quickly. Follow me. Jot down your comments after I finish. And I might get cut off before this uh, commentary is over. But really, to deal with the first topic should be quick and to the point. Because these are the signs of a deadbeat dad. And remember... That this God is supposed to be the ultimate father, the ultimate parent. What is a sign of a deadbeat dad? Many deadbeat fathers question the paternity of the children. Now, all of y'all say that God is my father. But where is it written? Where can you show me where God is claiming you? Woo! Where is it written that God is claiming you as their child? Show it to me. You in particular. And usually these deadbeat fathers, they result from uh, divorces or having children out of wedlock. According to the Bible, God was not married to Mary that produced Jesus. And Mary was married to Joseph. So if God messed around and got a baby by Mary, he actually committed fornication and caused her unknowingly to commit adultery, being unfaithful to her husband. That's messed up, ain't it? <laughs> that's what, hey, that's not my teaching. That's what y'all say. The deadbeat dad is an absentee father. How many of y'all? Y'all say that y'all feel God, and you, somehow you know God, but he's an absentee father. You have never personally met God. If God walked into the room right now behind me, you wouldn't know that that's God because your father, the ultimate father, 
is a deadbeat parent. Now, this father doesn't do nothing for you like the deadbeat dad. This God does not provide shelter or food or clothing. Everything that you get, you have to get it yourself. There is nobody on this planet that can claim God did nothing for them, really. You can work. If that's the case, then just sit behind a camera on YouTube and let us see stuff just start falling out the sky from your God, from your Father. It's not going to happen. Your Father, this God is so pitiful that they never, or this parent never talks to you personal, but send messages via another child. Now, you know how it is when you are in a family. You want to hear whatever the, 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 the chores or whatever is going on in family. You want to hear that directly from mama and dada. But this God person always sends some pathetic prophet, some pathetic messenger. What is wrong with daddy coming to me in person and telling me what they want me to do and what me what? They don't want me to do this. God do, do not pay any type of child support. Don't do nothing for you. Offer you no protection. You die from the same cancer. The same suffer the same tragedy as anybody else on this planet. No other type of protection. But not at the same time. If you don't follow. The the uh, uh, the the what the what I'm saying, the the uh, the, the message or the, uh, the uh, messages from the prophet or the messenger that your sibling gave you, now this God will punish you. Now here you are, you don't go with me to basketball practice. You don't come to the play that I was in. You don't do nothing for me, you don't pay no child support, but you got the nerve to try to threaten me because I disobey an order that I never even received directly from you. Woo, man. Boy, this deadbeat daddy got a lot of nerve. And this relationship that you have with your father seems to be like a master-slave relationship because the child does not live for themselves. Everything they are, I live for my father. So what type of place? If you're living for your father, what do you, got, what do you get out of this relationship? You get nothing. Everything you are is to this father. This dead be dad that don't do nothing for you. So for y'all that that like that type of father in your life, then cool. I have nothing to do, don't want nothing to do with no pitiful daddy like that. That teaches you nothing, ain't done nothing for you, don't protect you, don't pay no child support or nothing. Now, moving on to do we need a father in the house in order for a family to be successful? First of all, what is what is successful? Now, I want to make perfectly clear. It's always good to have a male around to teach male children things that should come from a male. But having just having a penis in the house don't mean nothing. Don't mean nothing at all. Just to have a man in the house, but the man is a drunk. The man is a dope fiend. The man is a pimp. The man is an abuser. So what, you have a man in the house. Does that make the family any better? Just to have a penis in the house? But see, all this comes from us being dominated under... under a male-dominated or patriarchal society where all this emphasis, oh, you can't live without me, woman. The black woman is the prime example that she can, can survive and she can raise her children without a man. Now, in recent times, because the female is not getting the proper teaching in her head, then she's falling off. But the reason why the black community is as strong as it, as it 
stairs right now is because you have so many sisters that are in their right state of mind, that want the best for their babies, and they try to do the best, with or without a male. And for the over 300 some years or more, she was forced to try to keep her family together without the male. And even if the man was there, he was destroyed. How do you think this woman feels? She's in the house taking care of her family with her man. But here comes some raggedy, evil, wicked, redneck fella. Knocks open the door and tells this black man, I want your wife. And he can't do nothing. This went on for hundreds of years. Now all of a sudden, you ain't too much better, black man. Now all of a sudden, you don't protect her. You don't support her. You don't provide. You don't do nothing. The redneck of today, the wicked, racist, Caucasian males of today still provide for your babies, but you expect this woman to jump up and give you some kind of honor because you have a penis. You need to sit your raggedy sissy self down. You ain't fought for nothing. You are absentee father. You are deadbeat dad. Does it really make a difference if the father is in the house? Y'all complain about Uncle Tom's and Sambo's. Many of these so-called Uncle Tom's and Sambo's, they come from a two-parent home. They have a mother and a father. It's not about the gender, the sex. It's about what's going on in the mind. But if you have a man, and he's a real protector, provider, one who supports his queen, his goddess, his woman, his only way, his only avenue into the hereafter, the future. And he protects her from her enemies. Defends his DNA. Now you got something going on. There are not enough of us. But instead of attacking your pitiful brothers, you want to attack these women. Because I guarantee you, if you develop strong males, these women will get stronger. Because that's what she needs. She's falling victim to her oppressors because they have gotten weak in this struggle. She's fought them off for a long time. Now it's time for the man to stand up. But instead of the man standing up, you would rather attack her because you're a little sissy. And you caught up in this religion garbage. Because you can be head of the household, but you don't have to do nothing. Except sit on your butt. And everything your family do benefits the oppressor. You don't build schools for your children. You don't do anything for your family. Everything that you do, you want them to have a beautiful family so it can benefit the conquerors. I'd rather... Things stay exactly where they are. We should not benefit nobody. If we can't benefit ourselves, then we don't benefit nobody. So again, I love strong men, but not in this way. Woo. But in the way that we should be like warriors and soldiers. Because we need warriors and soldiers and those willing to fight, those who are willing to sacrifice, those willing to die for these women, for our babies, for our future. But you're not. You just want to be comfortable in your oppression. And you want to get honor and you have not earned any. These sisters have did a good job. The best they could with what they were given. Now, black man, we have to stand up and take our rightful place. Take the baton from her. And as soon as the men straighten up their act, you will see automatic change. Why do you think these suckers keep attacking black men? Keep attacking black people, the males. Why do you think they concentrate on us? Because they know we are the key to the upliftment of our people. And once we get on the road, the right road, there's no stopping us now. 
McFadden and Whitehead. Thank you for listening. Jot down your comments. Gotta talk to you. Truth hurts sometimes. But the best medicine is sometimes the, the worst tasting medicine. This your brother Tali keep me raw. This was it is. The reality's temple on earth. Jot down your comments, y'all. In the name of my ancestors. <sighs> Peace forever and always, and welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. Of course, I'm the host, known here on YouTube, Daily Motion, Vimeo, and make sure that you friend me as Shaysher Tenobeta on Facebook. I am known as the Mighty. Mighty, mighty, uh, angel snub number seven, your brother and hopefully your friend, Talik Ibn Ra. What brings me to these few minutes is a slight conversation I had with a person whom some may view as a white racist or supremacist and in our conversation I was telling him or her they were faceless and most persons are faceless I was telling them no matter how hard you fight no matter what you do as long as humanity is upon this planet Sooner or later, it is inevitable that the black man that you hate, the black man that you make mockery of, the black people that you have made inferior for all these years, sooner or later, whether you like it or not, they or we will come on top. And as we were the first original people on this planet, it will return right back to that same condition or state not because we are superior because that is what nature calls for we for a brief moment in human history was taken out of what is called nature and of course with this statement and of course with this statement that I'm giving right now many of you will sit back in your chair and you will ha 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 oh, oh, oh. this guy is funny he is jacked out of his mind dude you crazy and even if that was possible the faceless troll goes on to say even if such was possible y'all too stupid what kind of brains it takes brains to rule the world. Oh no, it does not take much to rule the world. Not really. It takes just simply the domination of your gene pool. And really, that is what this is this whole thing is about. You have a white man who has taken over the world. And what he is doing. He has created systems. He has created ideologies and ideas. Not just to subjugate the black people. But it is designed to keep his DNA alive. This racist white man knows that he must keep himself separate from these dark people. Because if he does not, he knows and she knows that they will soon become extinct. They know, she knows, that if the integration, if this mixture of people begins to happen, they know that it is just one step away from their extinction. This is what this is about. You and I, we live in a patriarchal or male dominated society and systems in America and around the world and so now 
since the male this mentality is in rulership the male knows that it is his responsibility by nature and you can see this in many examples throughout the animal kingdom you see males fighting each other over dominance and since the male is in rulership his rulership in essence is simple only the strong survive so when you look at deer you see the the deer is banging each other's head only the strongest will be allowed to make in the bird kingdom even in many places this is very always seen among mammals the males fighting one another so you have white people or racist caucasian people because his dna is weak he must express his strength he must express who he is through his violence what he has look what i have i have houses and cars and diamonds and I have all these nuclear bombs. Look how many people I can kill. In fact, I can destroy the whole earth. Since his strength is not in his DNA, his strength must be found in what he can gather from this planet. Unlike the black man, no matter how stupid you say that the black man is, no matter how inferior you say that the black man is, his DNA is the strongest on the planet. That is not a racist statement. That is real truth. And it is scientifically proven that the dark gene, or what we call black, is the most dominant on this planet. All else, everything else is recessive. And since they are recessive, they can only produce themselves, while this black man can produce the darkest of the dark, and the light is of the light. The only people on the planet with the ability to do that. And if you allow this male to spread his seed everywhere, the human family cannot remain light. It will eventually get darker and darker and darker. And soon, this black man that you hate this black people that you despise, soon they will be the only people on this planet. So there is a constant effort, and the, there is an effort of any male to destroy his competition. So for all these hundreds of years, it is the plan, whether it is an actual thought or it is just something in their nature that has triggered we must destroy the black people of this planet if we are to survive. And that's what you see all over this earth. You see attempts at destroying the black man and woman of this planet. They don't fear you raping them. They don't fear you robbing them. They don't fear so-called criminal behavior. They fear actual integration with black men. Because they know that the black man carries that DNA. And where does this black man carry that DNA? The black man carries that strong DNA in his penis. In his scrotum. That's why throughout history, the first thing that you see the enemies of black men do, they castrate, they attack the penis. The black man's penis is targeted for annihilation. And the white man and, and all these other men, they know the power of the penis. They understand that. So that's why it's an effort to destroy the black man. The penis is more powerful than the nuclear bomb. The penis is more powerful than any gun that you have. They understand that. You might think that the nuclear weapons and all these weapons of mass destruction, you think that's power. The power is in the penis. 
And that's why there is an obsession with the penis in America. That's why y'all like to... Oh, man, I don't want to get nasty. I, I, I can't even go that way. But there's an obsession with the penis. Because that's where the power of any living force is. It is the... That is the instrument in which we make our genes go into the future. It's the only way that we know of right now besides a book, maybe the internet, where we can seek some type of immortality. So other males are jealous. So you have males that are jealous. When another male is strong and fit and getting all the women, you know other guys sit back who they think they are. Because that's a sign of strength. And women are attracted to strength. When a woman sees a man that's physically fit, then he's smart and bright. Then he can, he's a good provider. He's a good protector. That turns women all regardless to their race. So you see, even in white women, they admire the black man. Even when at one time they said that they hated the black man, they was in love with that strong. They call they said, I want somebody who is tall. Well, there are many men on this planet who are tall. There are many men that are handsome. It's according to what your idea of beauty is. But there's only one man. When the white woman said, I want somebody who's tall, dark, and handsome. There's only one man that can fit that description, and that is the black man of this planet. The so-called black people, the black man of this planet. So-called black. I don't remember anywhere where I can find where these Africans called themselves black or African. They were the life form. They were the products of this planet. And all this earth belonged to them. They was not dedicated and loyal to one specific place. As a human being, I have the right to go anywhere I choose. But upon male domination. And because I don't want to get dominated by this strong DNA of this dark man. I got to keep myself separated from them. Not only that, but these people also know that the black man is intelligent. He is smart. The white woman I seen on some videos recently said they smart, intelligent, and they and black men have swag. That's another way of saying the black man has a soul. This black man still has his connection, no matter how in poor condition we are, we still can reflect our connection to the universe. And that woman wants her seed to be entrenched, enveloped in that soul. So she can't help it. A woman, she can say, I hate black men, but she got to look at those black men. She got to, she has a thing about, I want that DNA. I want to become part of that. That's why you see white women in the physical. They used to be flat busted. Well, they, that's, that's true. Used to have fat butts and poorly formed, many of them. But since you've been integrating and getting more and more of that black DNA in you, now you have white women that's born with the big lips and all these traits and the big butt. The white women are getting it. That's what they want. They don't necessarily want you as a people or man, but they want those things. Because those things are beautiful. But you don't want to admit it. So we live in a society dominated by men. So you got constant violence. And it's over the spreading of my DNA. The spreading of who I am. And they see the black man. They see this penis as more of a threat than a nuclear bomb. Or any gun or tank. That's why there's so much hatred toward the black male. That's why so much, that's why black men catch so much hell. 
And since you now have to understand what is against you, then your only power is is unification with other black men as they have united against you so that you can keep your DNA alive. My time is out. Think about it. Jot down your comments. This is your brother, Tony. Keep it raw. This was and is the Rowley's Temple on Earth. Mm. Uh. In the name of my ancestors. Mm. Peace forever and always. Welcome to another edition of the Reality Stuff on Earth. Of course, I'm the gatekeeper of this internet ministry. Known here on YouTube, Facebook, Daily Motion, Vimeo, and perhaps some other places. MySpace. I'm known as the mighty, mighty. Mighty, ah, uh, Angel Snub Nub Seven, your brother, and hopefully your friend, Talik, even raw. <laughs> Woo, I'm sorry, but this this particular topic just makes me laugh. We just like to, we love to argue and debate over over everything except the things that's really most important. That really means something. But I just wanted to spend just a few minutes on this particular uh, topic and give my little two cents in. And I'm ready to shut up. It's, it's <laughs> the, the, the topic is right here. Is it up there? Okay. The topic is did human beings. Did men, were you, were we, was a human being created by God, or did we evolve from apes? And this question is answered, uh, there's many answers. Uh, of course, in the religious community, many would quickly say, of course, God made us from the soil and raised us up and God did it. Then of course many of you uh, who look to the scientific community to bring answers you will say that the human being we we were evolved from apes. Then there's a new black version that has come along and Black folks was created by God and it was the white people who came from black folks that tried to mutate themselves back into black people and messed up and got an ape. And they said that's the reason why white people said, well, I'll be a monkey's uncle. Hmm. I, don't, I don't know the whole thing. <laughs> Woo, the whole, but look at this, y'all. Okay. Now, my thing, what difference does it make? Because the bottom line, in our reality, where's my sign at? See, in our reality, it doesn't make any difference. Because your reality does not evolve an ape or God or none of this. The reality is your mama and your daddy laid down, did a little something, something, and next thing you know, you came into being. Regardless to how the first human beings came into existence, whether it be God or you came evolved from an ape, it makes no difference. The way that you came on this planet was via somebody jumped in the sack or the back seat of a car or in a hotel or whatever we know somebody had to do the do to get us here you have to stand you have to crawl before you can walk now some of us let's just say for instance 
Some of us just cannot stand the thought. I, I know I didn't come from no ape. I didn't come from no monkey. Give me a banana. We don't want it. The thought of coming from an ape bothers us. It's so pretty to say that God did it. You just dropped out the sky or some God just made you out of some dirt. That sounds so pretty. Or you came from an ape. You don't like that sounds so terrible. But the reality is you came from a sperm and an egg. They came together and then it began to evolve. Do you know what a sperm and an egg look like? So, I don't, I'm not trying to be nasty. I'm not trying to be vulgar. But a lot of y'all know what sperm and egg, y'all know what that stuff look like. That's what you was at one time. I think it's more prettier to start off as an ape and evolve into a human being than being, than being sperm and an egg that mess <laughs> but that's what we was we was two cells two separate cells that came together and those cells began to multiply but that's what you was for real the reality of it you don't have to worry about God you don't have to worry about no ape you was sperm and, and an egg come together that's, the, that's your reality. And then when you were born, you couldn't even walk. You couldn't even crawl. You couldn't take care of yourself. Somebody had to clean your bootay. Somebody had to clean up your that stuff when babies throw up and all that old nasty stuff. You couldn't do nothing for yourself. Absolutely nothing. You had to evolve. You had to grow. You had to mature. Hopefully you had good parents that helped you in that process. And now, after you evolved and become this human being, now you want to brag because I can use a cell phone. I can make a video on YouTube. I'm so great. I'm above an eight. Were you above the eight? When you was crawling on your all fours, was you above the ape? You couldn't even clean your own filth off your body. Now you have evolved and now you want to brag. I didn't come from no ape. I came from a some God. Some God made me. No. You was a sperm and an egg. You was really nasty looking. We are so arrogant. We so high and mighty. We are so supreme. You came from up out of the earth. We know that you came from out of the earth because you're going to go right back. You are living matter. And you're like a living machine. And once this machine, once the parts get damaged or they get worn, then the machine, like all machines, get sent back to the junkyard. And you go back into the earth you don't have to worry about the gorilla or nothing we really need to stop being so arrogant and high and mighty makes no difference you want to come from some god you want to come I, i'm too ashamed to, 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 to come from an ape it makes no difference where you come from it's where you're going is what you evolved to Isn't it wonderful when you hear those stories? I was so poor. I didn't have no money. I lived in poverty. Then they worked themselves from being poverty stricken. Then all of a sudden, they rise to being a superstar in this world. But that's not where you started off. Those are beautiful stories. Evolution is a beautiful thing because you come from a low point to a higher point. That's why in religion, ah, that's why in religion, going to heaven is so important. Is because you rise from this point, a low point, 
from living in a type of hell. You rise to a higher state. And you hope that you can live forever in that state. Physically, we cannot do that. But what we call spiritually, mentally, we can do that if we pass on our evolutionary traits. Our thinking process, if it has evolved, we can pass that down to our babies and that spirit will continue to live. It'll become immortal. So religion said that we can live forever. Not physically, but we can live forever in our in, in evolution, in our evolutionary process. It is beautiful. It's our reality. If we accept it. Well, it makes no difference. It makes no difference if you accept your reality or not. Because that's just going to be the bottom line. Because as surely as you was born, and you was born because... A man and a woman came together, you would die. So it makes no difference. You you can try to debate and argue and whatever, but you got a casket waiting on you at some time or another. And as you go into the casket, somebody else is coming out of the a womb of a woman, born and developed from sperm and egg. That's the reality. And I'm willing to accept it. You don't have to accept it. But like children, childlike minds, you can believe what you want. But those who understand the reality of things and understand how they work, they begin to evolve. And you will take their reality and their accomplishments based on reality you will claim it, God did this. God, no, it, it's always been with you. You come into this world with everything that you need. And anything that this brain can imagine or want, these hands going into the earth can make it a reality. So it's no longer just a thought, an idea with my hands. Not with my prayers, unless your prayers move your hands to do the work to bring these things into reality to change your condition. That's the only time pray prayers work. So it is so corny. It's so silly and so childish for us to go back and forth. Who cares what brought us into where we come from? A ape? A chicken? It looks like we came from a fish some kind of way because early in our development, we are in water. And all life, mammals, everything looks like some kind of fish in the water as it evolves. So it gives you a sign of where you really came from. And that includes the gorilla. But it makes no difference. It's what you do. When you evolve. And express the intelligence. That you was given. But I guess. You are upset. Because with all this intelligence. The human being. Still acts like. Savage beasts. Always fighting, always killing, always cussing, always raping, always doing something dirty to somebody. Worse than the beasts of the field. Because even though you have predators and prey in nature, if you go out into the wilderness, unless a lion is hungry, a wolf is hungry, they don't bother nobody. But you always got to be talking about somebody behind their back. Always got to be trying to steal from somebody. Always lying. Always cheating. So I wouldn't trip on whether you came from an ape or God or whatever. Because you, you, we have become an embarrassment to whomever we came from. Considering you're supposed to be so intelligent. It's really a shame. 
So if you are civilized, if you are evolved as you claim, then act like it. Stop being so savage and stop tripping about where you come from and concentrate more on helping others to get to heaven. That's what you should be doing. Rising to greater heights. Coming from crawling to walking. Thank you for listening. This is your brother, Talik Ibn Ra. This was, that is, the reality's temple on earth. In the name of my ancestors, peace forever and always, and welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth. Of course, I am the host of this internet ministry, known here on YouTube, Facebook, Daily Motion, Vimeo, and perhaps many other places, known as the Mighty. Mighty, mighty, mm. and your snub nose seven, your brother. Man, I like that. Feel like it's powerful. Uh, your brother, and hopefully, your friend, Talik Ibn Ra. Now, I would like to make very clear that I have much compassion and caring for anyone especially the innocent who have been harmed I want to bring before us a reality check or questions concerning this uh, case that's in the news right now a case that will soon be forgotten as usual this case of Trayvon Martin. May the little brother rest in peace. And my sympathy and my heartfelt condolence goes out to his family and his community. All those who knew him personally. I've been active in this struggle that they call black liberation. I've been so-called black conscious ever since I was nine years old. I have seen during that time many, many cases of Trayvon Martins. They have come and they have gone. And within the next week or so, you will no longer talk about Trayvon Martin. That's just the cycle. This shows it, it shows our hypocrisy in our outrage because when you become outraged that energy is supposed to turn into some action to change a condition that you don't like. But soon all that energy, all that that you've built up because you did not become active, because all you wanted to do was cry and whine like babies, because it's going to take a little work, and some of y'all are lazy, and some of y'all are fake, you really don't care, because if it was your mother, or your father, or one of your relatives, you would want somebody to do something, but when it comes to others, you sit back, and you just hope for the best. I used to get involved and I used to want to go into the street every time a black man or woman or child was shot down in the street or unjustly incarcerated I want to get involved in all like that I'm not saying this particular case this case is real but some black folks learn how to be fake they know how to lie too so they will lie on white police officers they will lie on whomever and play this I'm, I want to I want to use a different term but I just say the race card because they know that we get 
emotional over these things. But some of these cases are lies. I'm not calling Trayvon's case a lie. But also at the same time, we get this energy, but then we forget. How many Trayvons have it been last month prior to Trayvon? They've come and gone. We jump up like in a church, get the Holy Ghost. Then we set our butt down because the ghost don't stay too long. It only stays in the church. But this Holy Ghost don't follow you home. It don't follow you to your job. It don't do nothing for you except those few little minutes in church. And you hoop and you holler till you get tired. Then you sit down. I wonder what Trayvon Martin's family has done for the black community. Are they involved in this struggle we call black liberation? What have they done? So, if you have not done nothing for the struggle, if you have not done nothing to seek justice for others, do you come before the cameras? Do you come before the black community? Do you be come before the public? And now, since your son, since hurt has come to your family, now all of a sudden, we need an investigation. Somebody help us. Everybody speak out. Why well, your voices when the other person's son was shot down by police? Where well, are the voices of the of Trayvon's family when another person's wife is raped? Where well, are their voices? But every time we hoop and holler and get outraged, only when something happens to us, and that's something I did not want to do. But now myself personally. I was locked up unjustly. I seen nobody. Even though I was willing to march. Even though I was willing to speak in behalf of somebody else when they suffered hurt and pain. I was locked up for 10 years and nobody said nothing in my behalf. But that's all right. Because I don't want to be like you. But I also wonder. If you don't want to help nobody, if you can't speak, if you can't do something for somebody else, why do these people, why do these persons expect all this help? Because now I hurt. How many children, brothers and sisters, have been murdered? How many adults since living in this society? Of a vicious oppressor and an environment that hates black folks. How many adults, how many children have been murdered since we've been standing here on the shores of North America? It's, it goes into the millions. How many of us are laying in jails right now? Laying in prisons innocent. Who knows? How many of you were sprayed with uh, fire hoses, bit by dogs. Some of these still live today, our ancestors. All these evils done to us. And we have not earned none of it. Just trying to survive, just trying to live life in a peaceful manner. But somebody is always trying to hurt us. Somebody always trying to demean us. Somebody always trying to exploit us and it is our fault and we should make proper choices and accept responsibility that's why the old saying is if you sleep with dogs you get fleas so we're coming with these lice we're coming with these fleas because we continue to live and stay in a society that has no respect no love for us so we can easily easily be murdered. We can easily be raped. We can easily be discriminated against. Easily slaughtered. And nothing is said. Because these in this society. Have no respect for you. And they have no respect for us. Because we have become. Beggars. We have 
not earn any respect because we have no respect for ourselves. Instead of integration, you should be separating yourself from these persons, seeking somewhere else to go. Go to China, go to Asia, go to Africa. Just leave this place. Let these savages have it. Go somewhere where you can find peace. Go somewhere where you can create your own laws, create your own systems of education and, and law and entertainment and economics. Do your own thing. But you refuse to grow up. So, the, so every year, every few days, they shot down this black man. They killed this black woman. They raped that black child. We will always continue to cry. And every few days, I'm outraged. But nobody won't do nothing. Trayvon will probably be forgotten before the end of this video. And only a few people do anything. In this society, people have become pacified due to religious beliefs. Turn the other cheek. God will take care of Trayvon. Let God handle it. The masses of the people, regardless of color, the American public is pacified with pornography. Always looking for a penis, always looking for a vagina, looking to look at, always looking to look up somebody's butt crack. They fear the government, they fear the judges and the lawyers, they fear the politicians. They are lazy. The bottom line so many of us are lazy. Brother Martin Luther King said. I heard he said, I, I wasn't around Martin Luther King, but I was, I heard that Martin Luther King said that evil exists because good people do nothing. If you are living in a bad condition or a hard condition and surrounded by evil, then it exists because the good people and the so-called good people, they claim outnumber the so-called wicked people but the wicked people or the so-called unrighteous and evil people can do what they do because the good people do nothing and above all brothers and sisters how can we have so much outrage when we don't have enough outrage to do something about the murder of black folks on black people just a few days ago here in the st. Louis area a young sister just graduated out of high school she was murdered by her boyfriend there was no outrage nobody said nothing young sister had a lot going for her on a student even on a national level now she's gone no outrage. Nobody said anything. Sometimes I think we do this just so we can have something to say against white people or somebody else. We need to stop tripping like that. Because our main problem is ourselves. And I know you don't want to hear it. But the main problem is ourselves. We don't want to grow up. We want to continue to depend on those who don't like us. Our condition is bad because we don't do nothing about it except make a video and talk you can turn this video off now because I know you upset so what I don't care because that's the reality of it we are our worst enemy and until we change our community until, until we change ourselves as a people Trayvon was not the first, and Trayvon will not be the last. And you pass this cowardice, and you pass this unnatural.
such a behavior of integrating with a vicious and racist society that don't like you. You pass that to future generations and you do it with a smile. How could you do that? How can you curse your babies before they are born? Oh, man. Think about it. Think about it. This is your brother Talik Ibn Ra. Again, oh, my condolence to Trayvon Martin family, but I have to talk to us as real as possible. So we need to change this horrid condition. And don't pass it on to our babies. This was and is. Woo! The reality's temple on earth. In the name of my ancestors, <sighs> peace forever and always, and welcome to another edition of the Reality Temple on Earth. Of course, I'm the host of this internet ministry, known here on YouTube, Facebook, Vimeo, Daily Motion, <laughs> and perhaps many other places. Uh, I'm known as the Mighty. Uh oh, I got got my got my hook messed up. Mighty, mighty, mighty. Maybe I shouldn't use a gun. Ah, <laughs> uh, angel seven up seven. Maybe I shouldn't use the image of a gun. Maybe that maybe that's what threw me off. Ah, uh, I'm the angel seven up seven. Your brother and hopefully your friend, Talik, even Ra. I would like to take a few moments. Uh, just to speak with uh, Caucasian persons. Now, this is your opportunity, white man. This is your opportunity, uh, white woman, gentleman, sir. This is your opportunity to come to a, a black channel, to a video where you have been invited. See, many Caucasian people they like to jump into conversations where they aren't invited. But when the door is open, you don't want to come in. Why is that? Is it because you're just a troublemaker? If you're not a troublemaker, then you come on in this house. I'm inviting you in, and we're going to discuss this particular topic. And you can talk to me. And what I would like to speak with you, and of course, brothers and sisters out there, associates and friends, whomever, y'all watching this video, you can join the conversation, but I'm directing this uh, question to Caucasian persons who say to us all the time that slavery... Listen, uh, Talik or uh, Abba Rocker, whatever you want to call yourself. Slavery, young man, was a long, long time ago. How is it possible? How is it possible that slavery could still be affecting the black community in 2012? Such, sir. Is ludicrous, nothing but an excuse oh, 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 of you colored Negro African American. You're always changing your names, whatever you want to be called. It's just an excuse for you people not to accept responsibility for yourself and make proper choices. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, hey, fella, that is not how we talk. We don't talk like that and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> you don't talk like that either, do you? <laughs> now, I want to give you an example. The Caucasian people, the white people of America and around the world, many of them say that because physical slavery, that the black man and woman of America because our people we have not been in physical chains for over 400 years that experience should not affect us although because we did not have chains 
on us. We didn't have to go through that period of time, so it should not have no effect on us. Let us see if that's true by your example, white man. And I'm, I'm going to bring these examples to you or this analogy to you. I'm not trying to make mockery of you or anything, but you know this already. Well, some of you do. But your origins begin about 6,000 years ago, more or less. And there is no human being that has come upon this planet that did not go through a what you call a savage state and then you become civilized. It's impossible. We just did not drop on the, pla on the planet building pyramids and had electricity. It didn't happen. Everybody had to start somewhere. With that said, let us go back to your history, because I know you have kings and queens, and you have YouTube and cell phones, but let us go back, white man, let us go back, white woman, to your time, 6,000 years ago, which is longer than slavery. Slavery was about 400 years ago. But your period, your origins began about 6,000 years. We're just going to say. But anyway, it's much longer than 400 years. There are things that you do right now. You was not a caveman. And the white man of American, European, and Europe, European uh, origins. You even teach and you know that your ancestors live in the hillsides and caves of Europe. With their origin beginning in the Caucasus Mountains. You know about this already. Some of you do. You were cave people. You did not wear clothes. You had hair all over your body. And some of you are hairy right now, aren't you? You are very hairy people. You know this already. But back in the day, in the cold uh, mountains of, of Europe, it was not just enough to have a lot of hair grow all over your body. But when you kill animals for food or maybe you you scavenge animals you took the fur and you put it over your body to help keep you warm so you was wearing the fur of animals and guess what this is 2012 now you wasn't a cave person was you but why y'all still like wearing fur and you wear fur so much that other white people had to tell you, why don't you stop killing animals and stop wearing fur? There's no need anymore to, to kill animals and wear fur. But you still got to do it. Why? You don't even know why. Could it be possible it's in you somewhere to wear fur? Because you wore it all those thousands of years ago. Not hundreds of years ago. Thousands of years ago. You lived in caves, didn't you? Uh-oh. Now, oh, if you look at some of these modern uh, homes magazines, I was, I was uh, reading one of those magazines at a bus stop. There are white people who like to live underground. There are some white people that actually have built their homes like a cave. Look it up. You don't have to believe nothing I say. Go look it up. Living under the ground, living like their house is in a cave. Do you think they just doing that? Oh, I just that's just a good idea. I just want to live in a cave. No, could it also be because it's in you somewhere deep down to live in a cave? Because you did it some thousand years ago. Of course, the caveman lived a long time and he had no choice, but he ate his meat raw. He did not know nothing about how to cook his meat until, of course, the cave person discovered fire. And when he, 
And when he placed the meat over the fire, he found that the meat became easier to consume when you cook it. Or maybe somebody taught this K person about fire. Because you don't want to admit, maybe somebody taught you how to do that. But anyway, however it went, you went, you went a long time without cooking your meat. Now, don't white folks love to eat raw meat to this day? Steak tartare. All kinds, I mean, real, I'm not talking about medium raw. I'm talking about you eat meat raw. Blood everything running out of it. Back in the day, you befriended the dog. The dog helped your ancestors fight off and warned them against the wild beasts. You said that, the, that your best friend is the dog. The number one animal in America is the dog. Is that because you just like dogs? Or is it because of something that happened thousands of some years ago? And you had to learn how to climb trees real quick prior to the dog helping you fight off wild beasts. And you had to learn how to jump in trees to escape the wild beasts. And you learn how to jump from branch to branch. Now you call it gymnastics. You live in a cold environment. Many of you like to go out. It can be below zero temperature. And I don't care where you live. You like to go out in the cold. You like the cold. And of course, when you were a cave person, you did not really wear clothes. And much of the time, you was running around naked besides just the hair that you've grown all over your body. And even right now, you parade around. And especially you have your, the white woman. She running around with a thong in her butt. Everywhere you go, every anytime you get a chance, you want to be naked. You want to put on a little something. That's supposed to be some clothes because you covered up your private part and the nipple on the woman's breast. But that all, and then, number one, is that you live in a harsh environment. It was cold. Surrounded by savage beasts. It was brutal. It was violent. It was so violent that the men, you always showed that the caveman would grab the woman by her hair and pull her around because the caveman had no respect for his woman. As you've grown into your civilized state, have you had respect for the white woman? No. She always had to fight for her rights. And have you lived in an environment of peace? No. Even in your lifetime. Now just look at your own life, your own personal life. Start when you was born. Show me how long there's a period of peace. In the United States, it's always at war with somebody, always dropping bombs, always killing somebody, but always talking peace, but you're not doing peace. Why? Because you came from a violent place and you're still violent right now to this day. Is it because that's just the way you are or is it because something that's in you from a long time ago? So if you still carry the traits of a caveman, a violent, savage brute that ate his meat raw and grabbed his woman by the hair and dragged her across the ground, if you still carry the traits of a caveman, then why you think it's not possible that black folks who is treated like animals, the black man was made to, to not care for his babies because the slave master take care. The black woman was raped I don't know how many times. Many of these things from slavery, the black people are not used to taking care of ourselves for hundreds of years. Now all of a sudden, a law is supposed to be passed. All of a sudden, you're supposed to be free and everything is all right. That ain't how it works. 
There is nobody who has been mistreated, involved in a crime that just all of a sudden, oh, I'm just well. 400 years of hell. You need to have a rehabilitation program that at least lasts as long. Black folks have not been rehabilitated. So what do you expect? And then you living among white folks, you are the worst examples of being a, 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 a human being. Show the black folks how to be drunk, prostitutes, gang members, pedophiles, porn fiends, and all this other stuff. So before you try to judge somebody, you better look at your own record and think before you open up your mouth. <laughs> Jot down your comment, time is out. You get the point. You get the point.